Can everyone hear okay in the back of the room? Good? You're in the front of the room. I didn't ask you. All right. Good morning. I'm Scott Capari with the Coca-Cola Company. Um, I'm very delighted to be back at Integrate. It's been a couple years since I've been here. Um, it was quite humbling over the last couple of days, just uh, different students coming up and saying, hey, I enjoyed X, Y, or Z from, from my last presentation. I hope today uh, lives up to, to that, that same bar. Um, I'm a kid from West Virginia. I grew up just uh, south of here in Clarksburg. Got out of undergrad right over here at the business school, uh, moved to Atlanta, spent 10 years on the ad agency side where I really cut my teeth in media buying and media planning. Um, came to the client side at Earthlink, went to Coca-Cola almost nine years ago now, and as soon as I got to Coke, I heard of this concept, IMC. And I had no clue what it was, right? And the thing about media buying and PR and all the different disciplines of marketing, you're very siloed. So one of the first things I wanted to do was enroll in the IMC program back here was an obvious choice. And through that, I, I gained the, the breadth of knowledge in marketing. So I can speak intelligibly to the creatives, to the PRs, to the technical folks. Um, and I can navigate my way through the system and it, it's helped me tremendously. So it, it's an honor for me to come back to the university uh, uh, to speak again today. This is very conversational. I, I like storytelling. Um, and you'll see through my presentation that this is not your typical lecture. Um, I'm Italian, so I talk a lot with my hands. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it'll be a journey. So who knows what Coca Cola freestyle is? All right, better than two years ago. So if I ask you, who has seen the touchscreen Coke machine that you find at a Wendy's, a Burger King, etc., right? More hands go up. So I'm the marketing director for Coca-Cola Freestyle, that touchscreen innovation that you would find at an AMC Theaters, a Wendy's, or a Burger King. Um, and I, my focus is the marketing for Coca-Cola Freestyle across the world. So in the spirit of storytelling, this is Shelley. Shelly loves Sprite. And this is Mike. Mike's a Diet Coke with raspberry kind of guy. And for me, I'm Coke Zero. All day, almost every day, but depending on what I'm eating, I can go Pib, I can go Barks. There's something on Coca-Cola Freestyle for me. When we launched Coca-Cola Freestyle back in 2009, we wanted to take and reinvent the food service landscape to go from a fountain machine that only had six or eight options to a machine that delivers over 100 choices, 100 different brands, all within one platform. And the great thing about it is we did this because of consumer interest and consumer demand. Consumers like personalized experiences. They want something for them at the right time based on the food they're eating and based on the time of day. Now, if I asked you what kind of beverage do you like, what's your go-to drink, would you know it? Right, of course you would. But don't lie. Who hit Starbucks this morning and held up the line ordering your grande this with no foam that and blah, 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 and a pinch of this, hold the coffee? Right? It's, it happens all the time. That's personalization and customization at its finest. And we as consumers expect businesses to serve us in that personalized way every time, every day. From customer service to a personalized offer, they expect that warm, fuzzy feeling. And when you think about higher education even, right? It's no longer a one-size-fits-all type of program. Kids now can pick their curriculum, almost pick their entire four years, and navigate their own way based on their interests for school and what they want to do post-college. And the net-net to all of this, and you heard this in Paul's presentation, you heard this a little bit yesterday, the one-to-many world in marketing no longer cuts it, right? It's not about putting one TV ad out 
and shotgunning that message to a million, two million, three million users. That, it just won't work. So over the last few years we've noticed that you know, the one to many has become one to one and companies can't just do something well. You have to do it with that special touch, that special polish. Um, and there's a ton of, uh, there, there are several headwinds out there to make a marketer's life a nightmare, right? Between data and privacy. Whoever thought we would talk about you know, the NSA and hackers and all these other things that we talk about now, but privacy is paramount, but it's a slippery slope, right? You need data in order to personalize that experience. So part of what we've tried to navigate is, you know, throughout our company, how do we evolve as a hundred plus year old company into this one-to-one -one world that we live in today? And you think about our flagship brand, Coca-Cola, right? Been around for 120 some years. Coke is a Coke is a Coke, no matter where you go throughout the world. No matter what packages it's in, bottle, can, two liter, fountain, a Coke is a Coke, right? So how do you take that highly mass produced product and personalize it? So if you've seen the cans and pulled some of the cans out of the cooler, you'll see one big example of, of how we've done that. So we've gone from you know, having one secret formula, which we always talk about, to a personalized experience with Share a Coke which was launched last year, this year we're in, in, in the 2.0 version of that. So now we've got names on cans. We have created scavenger hunts where kids will clear shelves looking for their name, their best friend's name, their sister's name. We've created that collector's item out of what many would think would be a commodity, a low involvement type of purchase, right, an indulgence. That's one example of personalization within our company. Another example is what Powerade did this year for NCAA Final Four. The Just a Kid program came from a big idea. And, and you know, the creatives talk about big ideas. Marketers talk about big ideas all the time. And, and this, this idea was pretty profound. We're all just a kid from somewhere. The idea is about the potential in all of us. No matter what you achieve in life, you start in the same place, right? You're just a kid from somewhere, full of potential and big dreams. So how did that manifest? In an IMC world, we partnered with talent like Derek Rose, just a kid from Chicago. Different athletes from Anaheim, from Detroit, from Inglewood, from Houston, from Atlanta. Do we have anybody from Morgantown? Anybody from Morgantown? <laughs> Just a kid from Morgantown. <laughs> One? <laughs> Two? Anyone else from Morgantown? Can you say VR so we get it <laughs> <laughs> I saw one more. So, just a kid from Morgantown. So I've got one from Meadowbrook, and that's, whoops, sorry, good catch, good save. So everyone's just a kid, right? And, and that was really the big idea behind the Powery campaign. We're not just talking to the athletes, we're talking about and talking to those aspiring athletes as well. <laughs> so when we think about now Coca-Cola freestyle, what do we do in this one-to-one -one world, right? It's no longer the secret formula. We're about creating your secret formula. What's the right brand for you? What's the right mixture of brands for you? So again, don't lie. Who as a kid walked up to a fountain machine in a McDonald's and poured a suicide, right? A little of this, a little of this, a little of this, a little of this, a little of this. And I see your face, right? Most of the time, it tasted horrible. But it was mine. I made this. And I conned my little sister into drinking this. And that was even better, <laughs> right? 
So that's, that's the beauty. That's personalization. It's, it's that personalized experience to the consumer. And when you're at the machine, that's just one point in time, right? What do you do as a marketer for a brand that consumers can't get access at home, right? Potentially at work or on a college campus, in a dorm, in a, in a you know, where, wherever they are. So we focus on IMC. And for us, and, and Paul in several of the presentations yesterday talked about paid media, owned media, earned media. But at Coke, we have that fourth bucket of shared media. And I spoke a little bit about this in, at Integrate 2013 because shared media for us, and just a, a language check, when I say customers, I mean the restaurants, movie theaters, and theme parks that have Coca-Cola Freestyle. They are our customer, and then we've got the consumer who ultimately drinks the beverage itself. So for our customer, we have co-op messages, tray liners, posters on the door, that's shared media to us. So it's a McDonald's message and a Coca-Cola Freestyle message. Our dispensers, in and of themselves are media as well. They communicate a lot, just like our trucks do and our vending machines. That would be owned. Paid media is obvious, right? The banner ads and TV ads. And earned media is influencer, PR, et cetera. The other thing that I did, and, and Andy called me out on this uh, two nights ago, I introduced a couple years ago this theory that I have in my head about the pinball effect. And if you've played pinball, you pull the plunger back, the ball comes up and around, but you really never know where that ball fits within the game, right? Does it bounce back and forth in the bumpers? Do you just totally whiff and it leaves the game immediately? That's the consumer, right? You never know where the consumer is going to land within this web. And you want to make sure that your messaging is consistent across all touch points. Because if you see a Coke Freestyle commercial at a theater, and that's the only thing you see, well, is that a dead end? Did you encourage them to go visit the website? Did you encourage them to do anything else, share anything in social? And I'll admit, I'm one of the 76% who believe that the marketing landscape has changed over the last two years rapidly than the, the last 18 in my career. And, and this web isn't enough anymore because in the digital landscape, this is really the consumer at this point. This is the reality for me that I need to navigate every day. So if you put the consumer at the center and you think about the tools that they use every day, they never leave home. I'll leave home without my wallet. I never leave home without my phone, right? And through my phone, I can explore banner and search. I can download an app. I can look at the mobile web. I can do a number of different things all from my smartphone. So this is what I need to navigate the most. This is the challenge because as you heard in the millennial presentation, right, the multitasking, all the things that are happening with millennials today, it's real, it's a barrier, but it's not a barrier that you can't overcome. So when we focus on our ecosystem, we focus on three things. And this is a real guy in a real restaurant. He sent us this picture. It's amazing. Uh, you know, people will hug the machine, kiss the machine. The, the beauty of Coke Freestyle is everybody remembers the very first time they saw it or used it. Right? I see a lot of head nods. So we focus on education, engagement, and execution. And when we think about that digital ecosystem of our website, our mobile app, and other things, we take these three elements and we try to figure out what's the role of our website. If we had to do one thing and do it well, if we needed to understand why consumers would ever come to our website, why would they do it? It's to learn about the machine. What it is, what it does, where I can find it. And when we talk about our social platforms on, on Vine and Facebook, Twitter, etc., that's all about engagement, right? It's about the like, the share. It's about the conversation. It's about a click. And then execution, that's money, right? That's money, that means money in our pocket. That's somebody walking in, being motivated into an outlet, into a customer, buying a drink, pouring a drink. Selecting Coke Freestyle as a drink instead of tap water, tea, or something else that may be available. 
So when you think about Coca-Cola Freestyle, it is a 750-pound computer, right? And within the Internet of Things and all the connected devices, that machine calls home and it gives us a wide variety of information nightly. And the, the cool thing for me is I know what was poured by ounce, the time of day it was poured, the outlet that it was poured in, but there's one big component to personalization that I don't know. Who? I don't know the who, right? And if you think about the, bi the billion plus servings that we've already poured this year, I have no idea who's pouring what. I know what's being poured, but not who's pouring what. And, and therein lies the rub. And here's also where our mobile app comes in. So did you have any idea that Coca-Cola Freestyle had a mobile app? No. I know one, maybe two people did. So our mobile app is that connectivity for us to get the insight on the who. And it allows consumers to take that suicide when I was a little kid, and you can select two or three brands, you can mix them in our app, you can dial up or down the percentages, and you can save that mix, you could share that mix, and you can connect to a machine and pour that mix, all within a few seconds. So who's, like me, ha have been in an outlet stuck behind a few teenagers trying to do the old school suicide, right? So now, encourage them, marketing plug, da download my app, because they can navigate the line a lot easier. But, you know, everyone talks about the mixing feature within our app, and, and that's great, but that's not all that our app does. We can create and share mixes, we can send you different badges, we can send you um, you know, custom offers from a Wendy's. We can, you know, allow you to save your favorites. There's 140 plus drinks on the machine. So you can bookmark, if you will, your top three or five favorites and have them as soon as you connect your phone to the machine. You can complete challenges, you can enter sweepstakes, you could do a lot. And the key is consumers are freely sharing their information with us because we deliver value. And we talked a lot about that yesterday as well, right? Sergio's quote about selling more product all the time, but now the landscape has changed and it's a value-based exchange. Totally right. So before we ask a consumer to share their location, we need to tell them why we're asking for them to opt in to share a location on their smartphone. We ask you that so we know where you are so we can tell you where the freestyle machines are around you. We ask you that so when we know that you're in proximity to a Wendy's, we can send you a custom Wendy's offer. Come in today at lunch and get a dollar off a combo meal, right? Or upgraded size at a popcorn, at a movie theater, you name it. So let's look at the holistic experience for us because ultimately it all starts with what we call a handshake, right? Not very often will you walk up to somebody and just start a big conversation without some form of introduction or a handshake. And that handshake for us is that act of taking your phone out, enabling the camera through our app, and scanning the QR code that's in the bottom right hand corner of the machine. That's our version of a handshake. And from that handshake, your mixes, your favorites, your history, your badges, connect to the cloud and back down to the machine where that machine experiences changes and you'll see a My Coca-Cola Freestyle screen with my mixes, my favorites, and my promotions all right there on the screen. So I don't have to touch full calorie, touch this, touch that. I scan, I touch once, and I'm done. And you think about value, Time savings is value as well, right? Who has, I mean, everybody has at this point, the remote, list, remote key entry for your car, right? Everyone's got a key fob. What was so hard with inserting a key? <laughs> Nothing. You may lose it, but I still lose my key fob if that's the case, right? 
But, but what it saved was six seconds. And now you can't live without it, right? And that's all we've done over time is we've trained ourselves that six seconds is, is huge. Well, we've got that equivalent through this app as well because operationally, we want to get folks through the line with their warm food and their ice cold drink as efficiently as possible. And when you think about Coca-Cola Freestyle and mixing, it's no longer about 100 plus choices. Because when you mix two or three brands together at varying degrees and varying ratios, you've got millions of possibilities at this point. Right? Everyone will have their go-to mix. My go-to mix, and I talked a little bit about it, is, is my creamsicle. Take an orange Coke and a vanilla Coke, mix it 60-40, 50-50, spot on. Right? And whether it's Coke, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, love, love, love it. That, that's my go-to. And, and the key is, I've become the bartender, right? I've become the mixologist. It's my mix made by me for me. So let me play a quick video of some of the consumers post this effort for our app and some of our IMC work. Whoops. The success of efforts like this make it, you know, it, it helps the experience for the consumer. We've gone from that old legacy fountain machine, 20 year old equipment, bag in the box syrup, and we've made it fun and interactive, right? We blew people's minds when we first came out with Coke Freestyle because it was a touch screen machine, nothing else like it. We were awarded by Forbes.com a few years ago, they called us one of the coolest products of the decade. There were two, two, two companies or products that had this, distinct, uh, this, this distinction. It was Coca-Cola Freestyle, and can you guess in 2009 what the other product was? Apple, iPhone, iPhone. So it's great, great company to be in. But how do we connect to those consumers and get them to super fan status, right? When you think about the purchase funnel that Paul mentioned, we, you know, there were three segments to the traditional funnel, but he added a fourth segment, retention. So how do you convert somebody from a first time I just became aware to maybe I've liked you on Facebook, maybe I've downloaded your app, but how do you become a super fan? How do we navigate and educate, engage, and get them to execute? Here's how we do it. So this is our, our digital ecosystem. Again, consumers don't leave home without their phones. So on their mobile phone, our website is built to educate. And the number one feature 
is where do you find Coca-Cola Freestyle? So whether they're at work on a campus doesn't matter. Everyone's searching for one and consumers have told us they'll drive by my neighborhood Wendy's to get to the Wendy's that has Coke Freestyle. So that's great. We help them make that trip. And when they're close to the machine or an outlet, we use that opt-in for geofencing a special offer. We use shared media like the posters on this sign, on this building, to communicate a couple different things. Coca-Cola freestyles here, but a geofence is an invisible fence around a latitude and longitude that we can set up and if you're an app holder and you break that invisible fence, we know you're there and we can send you that offer for free appetizer, discount this, what, whatever the, the, the customer wants to deliver to those consumers. And again, the offer is value because I, I haven't found yet a millennial that doesn't want something free, <laughs> right? It's free, free, free. If it's free, it's for me. And we rely on consumers to amplify our mar marketing messages. So yes, we do our fair share of branded messages, but we use social media twofold. One, to create the conversation, but we also use social media as an extension of our customer care organization. So if you were to find a can of Coke, you can call the 1-800-COKE number if you've got a question, a concern. So they come to us in social media all the time. And greatest invention on earth, right? My son's a diabetic, thank you. He gets now all these diet and caffeine free flavors. Love it, it's the secret of happiness. Right? I can't buy this. Right? This is all happening organically, like the guy who was hugging the machine and sent us his picture. <coughs> Social sharing is paramount, but when it comes to a complaint, that's where authenticity comes in. Right? We, the Coca-Cola company, are known for opening happiness. Right? So when somebody, when something goes wrong. What do we do? Be authentic. Don't be afraid to apologize, right? Try to get to the facts of what went wrong, where they are, and put actions in place, steps in place, to correct whatever it is. And the top two emotions that we hear constantly are love and awesome from consumers. But that's a pretty big bar, how do we keep that promise to inspire happiness? Well, we need to focus on just surprising and delighting, right? Custom badges, little nuggets that we would hide in the machine. In the video game industry, there's a concept called Easter eggs. And you would hide, you know, push these certain buttons and you can unlock an experience. There used to be an old uh, command on a keyboard where you push the arrows up, up, down, down, left, left, right, right, or something along those lines to unlock something, right? You go to Google, you type in what? Tilt and roll, all, all the different iterations, and that's what consumers love to do. They like to find those hidden gems. So what we've done is we've hidden some of those little gems on our machine as well. And the key to unlock that experience is our mobile app. So now you can handshake with the machine and you can find a drink that was exclusively made by us in partnership with Disney and Marvel Comics. When the Thor 2 movie came out a few years ago, we had Thor Thunder Fusion. It's hard to say at 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but it was the only place you could find it was at AMC. And you think about Share a Coke now, right? Share a Coke, people think of Share a Coke as the bottle with your name on it, the can with your name on it. But if you go to a Coke Freestyle machine now, you'll see a Share a Coke button on our machine. 
And you wonder, well, how do you personalize something? I, yeah, I'm not going to find my name on the machine, right? I, I'm, there's no name on a Wendy's cup. But what we're doing there is we've created three mixes of different Coke varieties, Diet Coke varieties, and Coke Zero varieties. And you touch the Share a Coke button, you can see one of these three mixes. But the Easter egg is if you handshake with the app, there will be a fourth secret mix. And again, it's that custom, exclusive, I'm in the know experience that millennials want. So it's the 100 plus choices that we make on the machine as consumers, right? It's not about 100, it's now millions of options. It's the experiences that we create, it's the brand promise that we have to live up to and fulfill every day. So there's a few key reminders that I want to, I want to leave folks with. Um, one's that, that the pinball effect, right? Be willing to take risks. Think about your ecosystem as a marketer. And for those of you in school, think about the discipline that you want to get into post-graduation. Right? There's nothing wrong with being a media expert, a creative expert, a PR expert. But use the knowledge that you've got here from the program and try to influence your peers you may never get to the full IMC ownership experience, but there's a lot that you can do to influence legal, IT, privacy teams. Think about the user experience. Think about the journey. Right? If you're on a first date, you don't ask the other person for their social security number on the first date. Right? A little too personal, a little too creepy. But the, the app experience is no different. Think about the apps that as soon as you download an app, it's asking you for X, Y, and Z. Unless you tell a consumer why you're asking for X, Y, and Z, they're probably going to delete the app before they ever log in for the first time. Think about that. Put yourself in, the, in the, that consumer's mindset and, and push the folks around you. And, and the interesting thing about this, this pinball theory is it really is a game at this point. The landscape is changing so rapidly that you're trying to play a game before the playbook or rule book's ever been written, right? It changes so quickly. The next thing that I want to focus on is clear connections. Consumers expect value, got it. But when you think about that ecosystem, Make sure you don't have any dead ends, right? If you're going to have a TV ad, what's the call to action in the TV ad? Visit the website. So once you land on the website, then what happens? Download the mobile app. Check out our Facebook page. If you come to Facebook first, what do you want them to do? Is it download the app? Is it share a mix with a friend? Think about all the connections within your ecosystems. And once you've built the connections to ensure that you don't have any dead ends, the message becomes the key. Focus on the priority, the one key thing. What's the role of your website, your app? What's the role of the TV ad or the billboard? You can't cram 100 words on a billboard along the interstate. You get maybe six words, seven words max, one image. Because at 80 miles an hour, gone. I might pick up three words out of a PR boilerplate that's crammed with 100 words, right? What, it, what's, what are we all about? Coca-Cola freestyle, 100 plus choices. We don't talk about the app. We don't talk about mixing. We don't talk about share a Coke. It's too much to digest based on the environment. Provide tools to allow the consumer to amplify your message. So think about social, think about the app, right? Think about the use of hashtags. I, I think that the power of 12 campaign was amazing 
because they took advantage of conversations that were already happening about the Seahawks, right? So what's the authentic message that fits with your brand? For us, it kind of fell in our lap because everyone remembers the first time they saw Coca-Cola Freestyle. They were telling the story for us. Consumers were posting on Instagram with a hashtag that we hadn't even created yet for Coca-Cola Freestyle. So we jumped into the conversation. Not to be creepy, not to be big brand guy Coca-Cola, no. But if somebody says, oh my god, I just found the touch screen Coke machine, my immediate response is, fantastic. Where? What did you try? Did you experiment? And there's nothing wrong with getting a Coke, but explore a little bit. Why not a cherry Coke? Why not a raspberry Coke? Why not an orange Coke? A grape Sprite? A peach Sprite? Start that conversation. And, and people expect more, and they expect us as companies and brands to deliver more. And they expect us to stay up to speed with them as their preferences change. And then lastly, you know, I talked about this as well. And it's being authentic. Figure out who you want to be as a brand. What's your brand personality? If you had to put a face on your brand, would you be a Ryan Seacrest? Right? Very neutral, very diverse, right? Very popular, never controversial, right? Do you want to be the LeBron? Do you want to be, who do you want to be as your brand personality? And then once you figure that out, stick with it. Don't be schizophrenic. Right? You can't have six different agencies talking about your brand with a different tone of voice across all your channels. So your website, your app, everything you do has to be consistent, has to be authentic. And again, it has to be personal. It cannot be one size fits all. So. Our website, the machine, the mobile app, mixing, it's just the beginning for us, right? I'm going to close and say that, you know, the next time you get a chance, stop at one of the machines, figure out what makes the most sense for you. Figure out what your secret formula is. And come back and tell me what the experience was like. I love hearing about consumer experiences. And I'll share a funny story because when I left Integrate 2013, a few months later I go back to the office, I'm talking to my social media agency and we're looking at the line chart of the entire year for blips in social conversation. And like the power of 12, right, you see this big blip on the map and that's the day that we launched the banner. Well we couldn't figure out why we had a blip in our chart because from a marketing perspective we didn't do anything. But what I realized, embarrassingly so, I was the influencer that caused that blip and everybody here was the audience that shared the message. And, and it was, a, it was, that was my aha, oh crap, <laughs> effect that, okay, I think, I think we're on to something because everyone wanted to share their experience, their first time, what they like, their mix. So we're going to have plenty of time for Q&A. Um, I'll be around all day, all evening at the, at the keynote. So with that, again, I say thank you to the audience. Thank you to the program. <laughs> Thanks. Any questions? I'm s sorry, couldn't hear you. The collaboration between Coke, Dr. Pepper, and Pepsi with the My Mixify app that's gone out. Can you touch on that, please? I'm not familiar with the My Mixify app. The question was, can I expand on the Coke, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper collaboration with My Mixify? I've seen the collaboration with um, the three companies for the Beverage Alliance. Yes. Talking about. Um, 
obesity, calorie intake, being active, but I'm not familiar with the, with the My Mixify piece. And, and, but in general, the whole Beverage Alliance is here to encourage consumers to moderate everything that they eat and drink, right? Drinking a two liter of anything, eating four bags of anything, probably isn't a wise decision. Not probably, just it isn't a wise decision. Yes? Right. So the question, if you couldn't hear, was, you know, in, in the wave of personalization, you've got iPads, iPods with different color screens available, um, iMacs or MacBooks only come with two or three options. I, is it a concern for us to offer 100 drinks and then millions of options and variety around that? And, and, and is there any difference between brands at different price points? Um, I would say that, yes, Personalization is the macro trend. E everyone needs to get on board with it. And, but you look at Android and iPhone, right, and Apple products, two totally different uh, styles and philosophies. Apple, I believe, will get there, but in their own way from, a, from a, just the Uber design perspective, right? Apple's all about design. Android's all about the utility, the functionality, the speed. Um, for us, it's not a problem because when we launched Coke Freestyle, it was really the consumer demand. If I'm diabetic and I would go into a McDonald's or wherever, I would have one choice, Diet Coke, right? My caffeine-free option really wasn't existent. It didn't exist on a six valve machine, as we like to call it. So here, we're delivering exactly what the consumers want. We listened, um, and it's not, I mean, think about the, what was it, the iPhone 5C, which was the first time Apple introduced multicolor into their portfolio. I think we'll see more and more with that. And the Apple Watch is a good example as well, as well now with the different varieties, the different bands, and everything that you can do uh, with that product. Uh, Paul Reina with a, a cherry, vanilla Diet Dr. Pepper. Um, a couple of questions. Um, what is Coca-Cola Freestyle's sales process? I mean, are you expanding into other restaurants or are you keeping exclusive to Wendy's Firehouse stuff so to you that, and um, also does this represent cost savings to the to your customer or is is there a little more investment from the restaurant to, to bring in a, a freestyle money as opposed to a traditional Great questions. Your name's Paul? Right. So, for those you didn't hear, Paul, diet, cherry, vanilla, Dr. Pepper, right? And the questions were, you know, are we expanding Coca-Cola Freestyle in what outlets, what customers we are? Um, not only domestically within the U.S., but internationally as well. When I started four years ago, we had about 400 machines. When I was at Integrate, it was about 8,000 machines. Now we're about 30,000 machines. So warp speed um, in terms of growth. And we started in the QSR segment, the quick serve restaurant, fast food segment, because of the scale. But now you'll find Coca-Cola Freestyle at Walgreens, at Wegmans, at Wawa. You'll find us at different uh, movie theaters, AMC, Cinemark, et cetera. Different theme parks. We're all over SeaWorld, Universal, Disney, Six Flags. Um, you're also finding us uh, on cruise ships, believe it or not, more and more on college campuses. I still don't believe we're at WVU, but no, no we're not. Okay. You're at Sheets, though. We're at, yeah, we're at Sheets. I know we're over at Ruby uh, in the in the hospital cafeteria as well. <laughs> Five guys, right? Five guys, right? So, 
download the app, you can find one near you. <laughs> yes? I have a secret formula request. Okay. Captain Morgan. Captain Morgan. <laughs> so, er, clearly everybody heard that. I don't need to repeat that one. Um, at 9 a.m., that's, that's impressive too. So, first off, Congratulations for last night. That, that, was, that was awesome. Well, well deserved. Second is, we're also putting Coca-Cola Freestyle in fast casual and, and casual restaurants that have a full bar. So you think about Chili's. Or in the, in the South, we have this concept called Taco Mac. Taco Mac's known for their 400 beers and all the different variety of wings, but they have Coca-Cola Freestyle as well. And we've partnered with the Bacardi's and all the spirits brands to have our own little recipe book that when you're in a Chili's and you want a mixed drink, now you can have not just your Jack and Coke or your Jim and Coke or your Jim and Ginger, now you can have something with a little extra personality to it coming from a Freestyle machine. So, working on that as well. Yes? So, question was Mad Men and Coke. Who saw it? Who didn't see it but heard about it? Next morning. All right. I had nothing to do with it. My, 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 my take on it was awesome as a fan. It was quite a surprise for me to see it. Um, surprising, but not unexpected, on our company and our brand's social media response immediately after it, right? And, and that's what big brands do. You take advantage of a moment like that and you start to share and amplify their story. It wasn't even our, it, we were part of their story, um, but, but jumping on board in real time. And we were talking last night about great brands that do that real time marketing and social. Um, you know, everyone talks about Oreo, everyone talks about Charmin, Tweet from the Seat, and, and all those cool things. I, I like to think that our Coke brand team uh, and social media teams are, are right up there with that because that was, we, again, we couldn't have planned it any better. Yes? So you touched on the fact that you guys have an interesting relationship where you're in a Wendy's or a McDonald's and you're co-branding with that. So I'm in the situation and possibly other people here where I'm the same but opposite. I'm represent the retailer where we're carrying multiple apparel brands. Mm -hmm. And so from a marketing perspective, how do you really balance, you know, those two when you're you've got your own brand and it's a strong brand, you've got the brand that you're selling or that you're selling in, which is a strong recognizable brand. And obviously they don't always align on everything, but how do you balance those two so that one doesn't overshadow the other? That's a great question. So for those who couldn't hear, how do we balance the, the dual brand or the equity message, right? If, if you're an apparel brand in the retailer, if our brand is inside of an environment that we don't control, right? We don't control the four walls of a Wendy's or a McDonald's. They control that. It's their design of the store. That's why we have, and many people may not know this, we have red, silver, and black Coca-Cola Freestyle machines. They do the exact same thing but from a decor perspective, they'll fit seamlessly within whatever environment they're placed in. And from a messaging perspective, we work with our customer and navigate both sets of brand standards so we can be authentic but not obtrusive in their outlets. We have to be respectful. It's still a McDonald's, right? If they're talking about whatever burger or chicken it is, whatever quality theme they have, we need to fit within their message. This is their space. Um, and I think, I think about Coca-Cola Freestyle as we're the point of interest in their space, but we don't control their space. Um, I, I missed one of the questions that Paul asked earlier about cost. Coca-Cola Freestyle is a premium product within the food service industry, right? We're, we are replacing those big 20 pound boxes of syrup and everything, all 100 plus drinks are on board in the Coke Freestyle machine. So with that, with the technology and everything else, there is a slight premium to the customer to place it, um, but typically it, because of the extra traffic and volume that they're getting out of it, they get paid back uh, quite quickly. 
Yes? Scott, with big data and predictive analytics playing such a huge role in your ability to create personalization experiences, um, it's, it's incumbent on any marketer to make sure that their personalization stays out of the creepy zone. What are the boundaries that Coca-Cola Freestyle is creating around your personalization so they don't encroach upon the creepy, the creepy zone of personalization? Okay, let me see if I can paraphrase. So in, in the spirit and world of big data, and rem I did not use this technically within my presentation. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like the word big data. Data is data is data, right? Um, but in the spirit of big data, how do you avoid being creepy? What, what boundaries do we as a company place on ourselves to avoid that? And, and that comes back to the collaboration with IT and our privacy teams uh, and legal to make sure that we as marketers don't jump into somebody's home and environment where we are obtrusive. We make sure that um, for our marketing to children policy, right out of the gate, we don't advertise to anybody under the age of 13. Won't happen for any of our brands. So for that, you'll see an age gate, right? that lets parents and guardians know who we're targeting. But then on top of that, we talk about, um, again, the user experience. It's not about collecting data for collecting data's sake. It's about the value that you get in return. And you can use our mobile app without signing in and enabling location. You can search for locations. It may not be as accurate, because you didn't tell us where you are. You may have to then type in a zip code, for instance. Um, but that's, that's part of, of how we navigate. And again, it's all about the user experience and being upfront and authentic to, if you give me this, this is why, and this is what you, the value you get in return from it. In the back. So uh, the question is, in the spirit of marketing to kids, how do we navigate that for mobile apps? Since kids now, increasingly under the age of 12, are having smartphones. Um, you're right, they can download the app. The key thing is we're not marketing our app. You will never see an ad targeted to a child on Disney radio. Right. It's not because the kid's not controlling the purchase, right? So it's the mom or dad that's making the purchase and choosing what Jimmy or you know, Jill can, can drink. So the kids can never navigate that machine by themselves, you're saying? Well, no, they, well, not without a cup, right? <laughs> so that, that's the key thing. You can navigate the machine, but somebody needs to make the purchase for you. I think they can. The reality is, though, it's, it's fringe case. It's fringe case. Jerry. This, this is, has nothing to do with marketing. But I'm really curious to find, to see if the challenges that you faced with these machines, because these are not just your normal machines. Do you have, I mean, just building them must have been a huge challenge, but I can't imagine what it must be like having to distribute these things and maintain them. You know, I think about the guys that worked at the coke, you know, got stuck in there and they're rocking the machine. I mean, that, those things are expensive. <laughs> Do you have like a special budget to be facing any challenges on that? How you maintenance them and, and work with them? Yeah, so the question is, this isn't your stereotypical vending machine, right? It's super expensive. It's the 750 pound computer. It's very complex. Um, from a quality perspective, we lease these machines. So we own 100% of the maintenance. And the maintenance isn't as bad as, as what you would expect um, because all the engineering and all the patents and everything went into it on the upfront. Um, it's one nozzle. So there's really less to maintain at this point as well. Um, there, you know, number of, number of different things. What the interesting thing is shipping one, right? So if you had to ship one out to American Idol or to the Academy Awards, 
Now you're talking about big crates in transit and other things that you, we never had to think about previously that we're forced to once the first one got damaged in transit, right? Mounting different legs on a machine to mount into a truck for an experiential vehicle. So it, it, you couldn't just put our stock machine into an experienced truck and roll it out to a NASCAR race. We, we have to think about all those types of things. I hate to be on the other side of the spectrum from my happy question, but I just happened to get an alert from Mashable, and they published a list from Udemy of the most hated brands in social media. And I'm sorry to say that Coke showed up poorly in the study, but what was interesting to me, and this kind of tags on um, the question that was just directed to you about how it's being marketed to children, but they grouped Coke and Pepsi with brands like McDonald's as junk food brands. Um, you know, obviously McDonald's is trying to make mixed salads and McApples and other things, but right. how does Coke try to overcome this idea that, you know, we're just sugary beverages? Right. So the question was, how do we, Pepsi, McDonald's, how do we get around the, the unhealthy fast food, junk food um, conversation? The fact is we're not trying to get around it. We're, we're embracing it and it all comes back to moderation. It goes back to that beverage alliance and the question that was asked earlier with us, PepsiCo and, and, and Dr. Pepper on serving size, on portion control, on our low and no calorie varieties as well. That's one of the, the great things about Coca-Cola Freestyle because again, compared to Legacy, you had one diet option. Now you've got over 90. So it's that messaging that there are other, there are other options out there based on your time of day, your own, whether health need or not, uh, we have something uh, for you. Yes? Uh, operationally, fast food industry seems to be going to drive through. If you walk into a fast food place, it's usually not very fast because yep. they're pushing through the drive through. Right. Drive-through probably doesn't have the option of your machine, does it? It does. So the question is, in, with more fast food restaurants adopting drive-through, is there a Coca-Cola freestyle at the drive-through? That's our actually that's our number one awareness issue. Mm -hmm. That you'll find it, you're, you know, it's at the Wendy's in the dining room, but not in the drive-through, and actually, it's there as well. Well, the, my question here, though, again, this whole concept of fast food, which, in my opinion, through my lifetime since I've been through the whole thing. It gets slower and slower every year. And now you have a machine that has a single point of delivery with up to a million combinations, and you're standing there trying to get to your drink. Right. How do you deal with that? I mean, I can see a line of you know, five, ten people <laughs> because there's only one nozzle, and someone's standing there, oh, I think I want this. Maybe I want this. And you're just sitting there trying to get a Diet Coke. You know? Right. So, so at a drive through how do we deal with the millions of options, right, on Coca-Cola Freestyle? The fact is we don't offer that same technology in the mobile app in drive through So when you hit the speaker box, I want a number one and a Coke, a number one and an orange Coke. That's fine. You maintain your speed and efficiency. Um, we're not taking, at this point, a mobile app into their environment for a couple reasons. One, operationally, but two, do we really want to encourage somebody to navigate a smartphone when they're behind the wheel? No. No. <laughs> right? So th that's, that's what comes into play as well. All right. I'm out of time. Thank you. I will be here all day. Thank you. <laughs>